In this problem, we're shown a simple circuit design for a two-element electric heater. And the way this might work is there's a switch. It's not shown here, but you could have a switch that could allow current to flow through one of these heating elements or the other one or both. So there might be three settings. And on low, it runs through one element. And on, on medium, it runs through a different heating element that makes uh, more heat. And then on high, the current flows through both of them. And this is how it might be designed. And note we have 120 volts, which is standard household electricity. And we're told to find the total current supplied by the power source and the total resistance of the, the circuit. So here's how we're going to approach this. The resistors are in parallel. So I know that the voltage is the same. It has to be 120 volts in each one. And I'm going to name these. I'm going to call this one up top, the 30 ohm one, R1. And this one down here, I'll call R2, 60 ohms. So I can calculate I1 and I2. I1 is going to be V1 over R1. And I2 is going to be V2 over R2. Okay, and V1 and V2 are both 120 volts. Because these are in parallel with the battery, the voltage in each of those has to be the same as the voltage in the battery. So V1 is 120 volts, and R1 is 30 ohms, and V2 is 120 volts, and R2 is 60 ohms. So I1 comes out to 120 over 30, that comes out to be 4 amps, and I2 is 120 over 60, that comes out to be 2 amps. So then the total current, the total current supplied by the power source, that's what we're trying to find here, that has to be the sum of these two. 4 plus 2 is 6 amps. Because when this circuit is turned on, electrons flow around and they divide at this node right here. So if 2 amps flows through one branch down here, and 4 amps flows through this branch up here, the total coming in right here must be 6 amps. And that's the total current coming out of the battery, I. And then we're told to find the total resistance of the circuit. Well, we can just use Ohm's law to find the total resistance. I'm going to scroll down where I have a little bit more room. The total resistance, if I, if I remember Ohm's law, it's V equals IR. So we can just do the algebra to solve that for R. R is V over I. And that comes out to 60 ohms over 3. 20 ohms is the total resistance. Then for part B, we're supposed to find the heat produced by each resistor in 15 seconds of operation. So for part B, we're going to use Joule's law. And I'm going to give myself a little more room here. Okay, for part B, we'll use Joule's law. And for the 30 ohm resistor, The heat produced, we'll call it Q, or actually let's call it H, is I squared RT. And I is the current. That's 4 amps squared times the resistance, which is 30 ohms, times the time. We're told 15 seconds. We're trying to find the heat produced in 15 seconds. And if you multiply all those out, we end up with joules, and that comes out to 7,200 joules. And then for the 60 ohm resistor, again, same equation, H equals I squared RT. And this one had 2 amps of current and 60 ohms of resistance. And again, the time is 15 seconds. And we multiply all that out, and we get 3,600 joules. And again, some people find it interesting. The resistance that's smaller, the 30 ohm resistance, has more power, more heat. And again, the, the amount of resistance doesn't determine the amount of heat. Higher resistance, the 60 ohm here, means more resistance to current flow. So less current flows. And the, the current in this equation, you can see the I here is squared. It's more significant than the R. So when you increase the R, that causes a decrease in the current. And the current is more significant in this calculation 
than the resistance is. So decreasing the current flow causes a decrease in the heat produced. So the lower resistance heating element ends up being the hotter one. And the way we determine that is by finding the power. If you didn't remember Joule's law, you could still find the power. You could still say P equals IV and find the power in that heating element and then find the energy dissipated. Energy is power times time. Or you could have said P equals I squared R or P equals V squared over R. You might remember we had three equations for power. So if you don't remember how to put Joule's law together like that, you could find the power individually using one of those equations and then find energy is power times time. The one with the most power is the one that gets the hottest.